Pātanga Roa Uarau, the bio, bioactive potential of sea stars. Matt uh, Miller uh, from Cawthron is here. Matt is a researcher. Was that a horn? It's a sign. Matt, you're the next coming. Matt is a researcher working on marine lipid and bioactives. He applies his expertise in marine oils and natural product chemistry to identify, understand and commercialise these natural resources and to provide practical solutions for business and other research partners. Let's give a big Wellington welcome to Matt. Kia ora everyone. Tēnā katoa katoa. Ko Matt Miller aho. It's a real pleasure to talk to you today and a real privilege to leave up, lead this team that I've been working with for a little while. Pātangaroa uh, hurao, which um, loosely translates to starfish fruitful in abundance. And that's what this project is all about. And it's really apt that I'm doing it here. This project, it, project originated here with a tap on the shoulder by Kura over in the back room about four years ago. And that was the first time I got introduced to these characters. So, all good science starts with a problem, and our problem isn't about starfish originally, it was about Kaibawana. The mussel beds in Ohiwa Harbour were getting smaller and smaller over time. You couldn't go get your um, bloom, uh, green shell mussels, you couldn't get your pippies. And at the same time, there was an overabundance of these 11 armed starfish that um, was causing significant um, depletion or degradation to these Kaibawana beds. So there's been a lot of work before I even stepped on the scene looking at these um, uh, starfish. And they were identified by the Ohiwa Harbour um, strategy that they were the number one management issue in the harbour. Um, and a huge biomass. So that's where I got the tap on the shoulder and where I met Kura. And this is where the dream team started. So um, I'm a Lipids guy at heart, a chemist, looking at bioactive stuff. Um, Kura has had long, deep engagement with that harbour, with the people in the iwi, the community, the different groups that are in there. But also, she's had a long, deep understanding of under the water as well. She's been down there counting starfish, understanding um, what's going on in that harbour. And she came to me and talked to me about these guys, what could be in there of value, because we don't want to get rid of it as a management um, concern, remove the starfish, there is an intrinsic value through there. They are meant to be there, they are native species. So we want to understand what value can get out of there and create a, a unique blue economy proposition. And that's where I was able to go, oh, you might have got to meet my mate Matt. I used to share an office with him back in the day at Plant and Food. A protein scientist moving in the world of collagen. And um, you might have heard of collagen from the little jar you rub on your face every morning. Marine collagen is a really nice commodity. So we were able to get together and sort of come up this program as we were all sitting down in lockdown, sending um, emails to each other. So what was the plan? Well, we wanted to develop with the local users, the iwis, the councils, the dock agencies, the people that use Ohiwa Harbour and understand some fundamental knowledge around what we could do with starfish. We didn't want to remove them all from the system because they are meant to be there, but we do want to understand the management from there. Having Kura on the ground up there was great in two aspects. First, she's got that engagement piece um, that she's they're her whānau, they're her iwi, they're people that she works with, but also another one bit is she had that sort of long-term environmental assessment of what, uh, um, what's going on in the harbour. But we wanted to find this circular blue economy uh, result where the money we could make off a product made from starfish could go back into that management of that system, put petrol in the tanks of those boats that are going out there, employ PhDs or people to sit out there and understand what's actually going on that ecosystem and actually um, aid that ecosystem, not make people rich, but have that circular thing going around and supporting Ohiwa Harbour. So you could collect your green shell mussels and also you know, jump off the pier and everything else you do up there. So this is where this came in. 
South Koreans love marine collagen, particular um, starfish collagen, under the premise of its rejuvenation abilities. You cut an arm off one of these, it grows back. You rub this on your face, and you maybe get back to your 20s. Um, hopefully. Um, so there is products out there. This is a reality. So we wanted to find out, understand what's in starfish and what we can do with it. Um, we also wanted to engage, co-develop, co-develop and understand all those stakeholders out there. We're only a part of this project. Um, and there's a really nice Ohiba Harbor forum that we can present and talk to these, as well as the iwi up there, relationships that Kura's been working on. Also, some other work that Kura will be presenting about this, having PhDs out there looking at the um, environmental um, and the ecological aspects of that harbor. So it's long and sort of deep. So what's in a starfish? So we did uh, seasonal sampling for a year, understanding what's going over the samples. Kuro was out there giving us samples, and we can understand that there's a whole lot of protein inside of these starfish. A third of that is collagen. There's little bits of fat, which is my interest. There's not really much to be excited about. There's a little bit of carbohydrate. These are freeze-dried samples, so we've removed the moisture. Mostly it's 80% moisture. Also in there, there's a whole lot of ash. This is uh, minerals and compounds, and the major one is calcium carbonate. Those little hard bits of those starfish are calcium carbon carbonate held together by collagen that allows it to move. Now, we were able to isolate the collagen, and this is an SDS page of it, and this shows it's nice and pure compared to another resource out there, which is hokey um, collagen, with Matt's done a lot of work in, and it has a similar profile, might have some benefits around there. Um, but we also looked at a whole lot of other stuff in there, if there's toxic things in there, if there's gags, there's amino acids, we had throw the works at it to understand the bioresource in there. And as you can see here, here's a freeze-dried uh, starfish on the outside here. These are all little calcium carbonate hard bits in between are held together by collagen that makes it move and flex. Inside there's a big sort of soft part where the gonads and the digestive gland and all those bits pump things around. These things blow up blenders, by the way. They're quite hard. Um, and from that we were able to develop a nice little information package that we can give to iwi and um, other um, decision makers up there that break down what's inside the bioactives inside starfish, these two starfish. There wasn't much differences between the two different species. One was inside the harbour, one's more outside the harbour, but we could actually give it as a sort of a, a resource so you can make decisions around what to do with them and not just throw them away in a tip where no one gets any benefit of it. The next thing we were sort of employed to do was trying to understand to make a product out of it. So we wanted to make this product pretty lo-fi. You could do this in a commercial kitchen or a marae. We wanted to do it in a bucket. And we also wanted to look at green chemistry options. So we started off with three starfish. Um, we rubbed in a little base and um, broke down a little bit of the non-collagen proteins. Then we add a little bit of acid to solubilize those um, proteins, the collagen proteins that we want. We can't tell you what, exactly what it is. That's Matt's IP, and we're going to We've got this recipe that we're giving to the iwi about this. We did some hardcore, cheap filtration at the stop, and then we made some beer and we got drunk on that for a while. <laughs> now, after some more um, filtration, you get this sort of yellow beer-like fraction. Um, add some enzymes in there to break the collagen up into hydrolysates, and then you can freeze dry them down. So all this can be done pretty much in a commercial kitchen, except for that last step, which is the freeze drying into that powder part there. You could add that as an ingredient in um, uh, uh, skincare products, and that's what this is here. So our three medium-sized starfish, they're not really big. We get starfishes up to a kilogram. It looks like that alien on, in, uh, that face sucker on aliens that goes around, they're huge. And um, we can extract um, collagen from those three to produce 60 of these at an occlusion level that's what sort of common in the skincare industry, a 1% collagen. Um, if you sell bottles of uh, face cream, they're all about $20 each. From these three starfish, you can make like $1,000 worth of um, uh, collagen cream. But the biggest cost in here is about drying that powder, the manpower getting it out, and the other 99% of stuff that is in this cream, which isn't collagen. So, I mean, we've, we've broken this down for the iwi to understand what they could do with it. 
So in the end, we've been able to develop a scalable product to be worked in different ways and have different options for the EWE. They could work with other commercial partners to do the whole process. They could do some process in-house. They could control it all um, and work with some people to toll process like freeze drying of it. So there's different options where they can get their benefit out of it. We weren't trying to make these cost offended green chemistry ones, trying to look at all the fractions that aren't collagen and actually make value out of them, fertilizers and the like. Um, and we want to design to maximize yield to get as most out of that. But what we've done is develop cosmetic part products like these that can be sold and distributed and circular economy and fund all that research that needs to be done in the Hiwahawa. Understand that management of that um, starfish and make sure it's manageable so you can go collect your kaya moana, have a feed, as well as support the petrol and the resources that are out there in the water. So, cheers. Thanks very much.